Seven Star Greninja raids are coming soon, and that means it's time for us to speculate on potential counters so that we can begin preparing. First of all, let's quickly talk about Greninja and what we can expect from it. Greninja is a water and dark type Pokemon, and this raid will be a poison Terra type. That plus a diverse move pool gives it quite a lot of coverage. It will more than likely have its hidden ability, Protean. Some people are thinking Battle Bond, but personally, I don't believe they'll give us that because it is an event-only ability and can't even be bred down. Charizard and Cinderace had their hidden abilities, so I imagine this will be the same case here with Protean. Greninja is a mixed attacker that leans slightly towards special attack and thus is often ran as a special attacker. I think this raid will either feature both physical attacks and special attacks, or just special attacks, so I intend to focus my preparations mostly on special. I fully expect to see Water Shuriken since it is his signature move. I also expect to see either Gunk Shot or Terra Blast for poison damage. A dark move such as Dark Pulse or Night Slash also seems like a given to me. Greninja can learn ice moves, such as Ice Beam, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see that for a spicy coverage move. Fighting and Grass moves also show up in his move pool, so don't be surprised if he ends up having Brick Break, Grass Knot, or Trailblaze for even more coverage. There's also a threat of several status moves to assist Greninja or hinder us in many different ways, such as Rain Dance, Taunt, Smoke Screen, and many more. We've seen Sunny Day on Charizard and bulk up on Cinderace, so I would definitely keep an eye out for things like Rain Dance and Sword Stance in this raid. As I said, I'm expecting quite a challenge from this raid Pokemon. At this point, I'm not even sure yet if there will be a reliable option to solo it. But, don't worry, I think we've managed to come up with some good options here, and maybe a solo build will come to us once we have all the data. For now, let's get into what we do currently have. First up on my list is Lucario. Lucario is another mixed attacker similar to Greninja with a diverse move pool, so it gives us plenty of options for countering whatever Greninja throws at us. The only real concern here is if Greninja brings a fighting type attack. For Lucario, I'm recommending two possible builds at this time, dependent on Greninja's build. My first choice is this special attacker build that features Calm Mind and Nasty Plot to boost your stats, then Metal Sound to lower the Greninja stats, and Psychic to capitalize on all of that for massive damage. You'll want IVs maxed in all stats except attack. EV spread will be 252 HP, 252 special attack, and 4 in special defense. For the ability, it's not super important, but inner focus would be best on this build. Then for a held item, I'd recommend Leftovers for healing or Life Orb for additional damage. Overt Cloak may also be a good choice because Greninja will more than likely have moves with secondary effects, such as Flinch, Confusion, Status Conditions, etc. If I don't give a specific item recommendation on a build, consider one of those three because they're going to help any build we have. Next is a Lucario build that focuses on physical attack and defense in case if Greninja is putting more focus into physical. This one's very similar gameplay-wise to the previous special build. Bulk up in Sword Stance to boost your stats, Screech to lower his, then Earthquake or Bone Rush for massive damage. I give two options for the attack here because Earthquake's great damage, it doesn't hit allies in raids, and it allows for more options for your held item, but Bone Rush with loaded dice guarantees that it will hit just as hard as Earthquake with four hits, and it'll do even more damage if you get that fifth hit. So just throwing it out as an option. We'll want to max all IVs except special attack, then invest your EVs into 252 HP, 252 attack, and 4 defense. For the ability, this time we'll want Justified to hopefully get free attack boosts from dark damage. And for held items, we'll refer back to our previous 3 recommendations, or of course Loaded Dice if you're running Bone Rush. Now, onto a Pokemon that has potential for good damage, if it can survive. Vaporeon is an excellent choice for a stored power build. The only problem is its mediocre defense stat. If Greninja has any physical attacks, namely the Gunk Shot that I'm expecting it to have, then it's going to melt your Vaporeon, so maybe not the best choice. But if you have a good support to set up Reflect or provide heals, then you might do well with a Vaporeon with Calm Mind, Acid Armor, Sword Power, and for the fourth, maybe Fake Tears, Charm, or Aqua Ring. Obviously you want Water Absorb on it, and here's the ideal IVs and EVs really quick before we move on. 252 HP, 252 special attack, 4 special defense, and the only IV we're not worried about is attack. Next on my list is Klefki. 
I know, a bit out there, but hear me out. Lefki's going to resist, or at least be neutral to most damage from Greninja, even being immune to poison, much like the Lucario that we already recommended. Another stored power user here, you'll want to initially set up light screen or reflect, depending on what type of moves are being thrown at you. This will allow you more survivability while setting up your calm minds and metal sounds. If Greninja's throwing both physical and special attacks, you may want to swap metal sound for reflect or light screen, whichever one you're not already running. Once you finish setting up, just spam stored power Power and hope your stat changes don't get nullified. IVs and EVs should be as shown here, no need to worry about the attack IV, and you'll want 252 EVs in HP and special attack. For your ability, you should run Prankster, and for the held item, once again, refer to our three picks from before. Next up, we have Garchomp with Sword Stance and Earthquake. Not going to spend too much time talking about this one because I feel like its damage output just isn't high enough to justify how squishy it is in this raid, especially if Ice Beam's on the table. If you have support teammates to protect or heal you, then maybe it's worthwhile. Maybe. But I still feel like there's better options. Regardless, here's the build I came up with if you'd like to try it. Next, the One True Sire. Lod Sire, in all its glory, will survive quite well in this raid, unless ice moves come out. But even then, if you run leftovers, set up with stockpile, and use recover as needed, you should survive quite easily. The problem comes down to getting enough damage output. Lodzire can do decent damage with Earthquake, and maybe some boosts with Curse, but will it be enough to solo this raid? I doubt it. Still, might be a decent pick for team raids though. As for the IVs, you'll want everything but special attack. EVs, you'll put 252 in HP, and 252 in either your attack or special defense. Water Absorb, of course, for the ability. For the held item, you'll want one of the aforementioned three, or Ability Shield so you don't lose Water Absorb. Adamant Nature and Ground Terra, of course, are preferred here. By the way, let me know in the comments if you have any builds that you think will work. That's all of my top recommendations for now, so if you found this helpful, please drop a like on the video and maybe even subscribe to be notified of my next upload. I'll drop updates here later if anything good comes up when we have all the data in front of us. And of course, I'll be dropping videos on other Pokemon tips, tricks, and guides over time, so stick around for all of that. Thanks for watching.